I'm uh, glad to be here and uh, after this wonderful talk we have just heard. Today I want to speak about uh, multi-layer networks. That is a topic that has been um, the focus of my research for some, some, some years now. And this is uh, a field which spark from what is called uh, network theory or network science, which is a, a kind of modern interdisciplinary version of graph theory in some sense, in which one speaks about networks instead of graph and networks are um, a representation, a graph that represent a complex systems. And this complex system might range from the brain to social networks. And there's been a lot of research on these um, topics and uh, recently it has been uh, understood that actually in order to, uh, to, to capture the complexity of uh, many system is important to go um, further and not only characterize the system by the network of their interaction, but also characterize the fact that this system might be formed by interaction of different type of different networks nature and connotation that coexist and co-evolve. So the first um, uh, kind of models that have been studied like by sociology was this little social network of Florentine families in the Renaissance period where the power of um, of uh, the, the, the network of powers was, was established via marriage alliance or business relation. And actually one, uh, one important question in here, the centrality, so characterizing what is the special role of the Medici family that was ruling the city at that time. But nowadays we have actually access to much larger data set. And one beautiful benchmark data set is a data set coming from the American Physical Society Journal, which are journals that have been published for more than um, 100 years and have nowadays um, many journals. And so one has the full annotation of all the authors and all the bibliography of the papers published uh, for all this span. And one can study the collaboration network in which each layer, each network correspond to the collaboration between scientists on different subjects, on different topic, because the paper are characterizing by their, their topic. And then from this network of networks of similarities between these collaboration uh, um, networks in different topics, one can build from the bottom up a, a, a model which uh, characterize how knowledge is created, how new fields are are emerging uh, um, over the years. Also in transportation networks, these multi-layer networks are very important and transportation network have been studying a lot, for instance, for uh, studying epidemic spreading, the fusion of uh, uh, epidemics. And um, actually, uh, if you look at, uh, at Europe, uh, this uh, air transportation network is not just one single network, but has a multi-layer structure in which there are flight connection operating by different airline companies. And as you can see, the topology of the different uh, airline companies can be dramatically different and uh, reflecting different strategy, but the commuting pattern of people uh, across the continent is shaped by this multi-layer uh, network structure. Also in climate, there has been an increase in, in, in increasing interest in, in climate networks and one can build you know, from, from correlation or mutual information, networks, uh, um, uh, multi-layer networks in which one has the geopotential at different altitudes that characterize the different layer of the structure. And in biology, multi-layer network are ubiquitous. So the story goes there in, in molecular biology that people, biologists have first studies like just a single molecule just a single protein, the structure and, and things like that. Then in the uh, beginning of this century, people have studied a single network. So whole signaling interaction, all to hybrid interaction. But nowadays 
one uh, is focusing on the interactome and the interactome is the set of all the interaction in the cell, including all the different type of molecules and all the different type of interaction. And every time you have this network, which has some nodes and interaction of different type, different color, you can disentangle in different layers where each layers um, capture the interaction of a different nature and connotation. And um, also in, in brain research, this approach is, has been uh, very fruitful. And for instance, if you just focus at the uh, molecular level, you have neurons that can interact electrically or chemically with synapses or cap junction. And actually in, in Cambridge, there is a beautiful paper that studied the multilayer a network of C. elegans that is this worm whose brain is fully annotated and they capture not only you know this wild interaction so with, with the connection between neurons but also wireless because neurons can communicate via transmission of molecules which diffuse in the brain in this context. So uh, in order to uh, characterize, model, and predict this complex system, it's really important to, to capture this multilayer uh, structure of, uh, of, of networks. So I, I have uh, wrote an entire book, a monography on this subject. It is a very, very rich kind of literature. There are a lot of results and also uh, a lot of interesting results about epidemic spreading, how epidemic spreading uh, you know, is affected also by social behavior, which might take place on a different uh, network, like uh, you know, online social network and so on. Um, so the, the literature is very, very rich. And in this monography, I, sh I show the maths and uh, in light of the application. And recently we have published another book, which is a collection of chapter actually more focus uh, for, for the biological public, um, uh, trying to, to bridge between the maths and the, the role that this maths has for, for biology. So network of networks comes in very different uh, structure, very different topology. Of course, you have different layer characterizing different type of interaction, but then there is a, a lot of degree of freedom of how these different layer interact. So you can have interaction between one node and many nodes in another layer, or you can have um, a one-to-one -one mapping between nodes of different layers. Um, and uh, there is a lot of degree of freedom. And in, in the book, I, I discuss um, this freedom. But here I will focus on a very special topology that is the one of multiplex networks, uh, which is uh, the one for which more, more results are available. And that is still encoding a lot of, uh, of information. And the first message I want to convey is that these multiplex networks really encode more information than single layer. So this picture of networks uh, in, with this um, multi-layer structure really can help the modeler to extract more information from these uh, data sets. So a multiplex network is a multi-layer which has a more uh, simple uh, structure, more constrained structure. So it's formed by M layer and nodes and at each node has a replica node in every layer. So for instance, one layer can be a email communication between people. The other layer can be mobile phone and the other can be chat. And a, a person, node I, which I don't know, is John Smith, can be transmit in uh, email, mobile phone, or chat. You know, there's, there's the different identities. Or, you know, if you have online social network, you can have Facebook ID and a LinkedIn ID, which are corresponding to the same node. So uh, there are different representation of these multi-layer networks. Of course, they can be used for different uh, purpose. So one is this one of a kind of colored graph in which different interactions are 
a different color, but otherwise the nodes are aggregated. One is when you distinguish between these, um, these different layer and the other one is when you also um, include uh, a, what are called interlink, these dashed white links connecting a replica node. So for instance, one layer could be tube transportation network, and one layer can be um, bus transportation network, and you want to include a cost for going from one node to another, okay? Cost for sh shifting, changing the platform. And of course, as multi-layer network in general are uh, a way to encode information, the fact that you had you treat links of different layer with different uh, with and you assign different meaning, different connotation, uh, enrich the the net multi-layer network structure uh, a lot, and these these network are not reducible to to single uh, to single layer. Structurally, also if we have these interlinks, these interlinks will be placed um, um, deterministically between replica nodes. So really the structure of the multi-layer network is encoded in a vector, in a list of graphs, each graph uh, between a set of vertices and a different set of edges. So practically, they are characterized by a list of adjacency matrix where each matrix has element ij indicating if node i is linked to node j in layer alpha, okay? So you can think this list of matrices as a tensor with three indices and this is perfectly fine. However, I prefer this notation because you cannot really rotate this, this level of the node and the level of, of the layers. So, I prefer this more, more conservative notation, but uh, also with the tensor formalism, you can do quite, quite a lot of things. For instance, you can find prin principal component in some sense of this tensor. So this, this structure uh, characterizes uh, a lot of correlation. And one important correlation is uh, the one of link overlap. So if we just take the example uh, we discussed before of their transportation network, you can have many you know, pair of nodes connected in more than one layer. So many pair of airports connected by flight of different airline companies. And this is actually what I'm showing is, is the map of uh, the flight connection in, in Europe where the flight operated by the, at least one airline companies are shown. And you see it's, it's quite a significant part of, 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 the, of, the, of the flight connection in Europe. So uh, in order to characterize this link overlap, one can characterize the number of pair of nodes connected in layer alpha and in layer alpha prime, or locally for each node, node i, you can say uh, how many friend of node i are both friend interacting in layer alpha and in layer alpha prime, right? So while in, in, in seeing, so this is, these are, global or local property uh, in, in a network, but also um, very locally, if you just consider two nodes in a network, any two nodes can be either connected or not connected. And in a multi-layer network, things are a little bit different because every node, every pair of nodes can be connected or not connected in multiple way in multiple layer. So if you have just two layer here, uh, you can consider node one and node two, which are connected by in layer one and in layer two. So we can take a, like a vertical mm, description of their interaction and say that they are connected by multilink one, one. Uh, you can take two and three that are connected by multilink one, zero and so on as exhaustively. So practically, uh, uh, you, you, you consider all the different possibility and this allows you to characterize not only the degree, so the number of links for each node, but also the multi-degree, so the number of multi-link of a diff given type for every node. Uh, 
So the multi-degree of a node is the number of multi-links of a certain type incident to it. So for instance, if you have two layers, um, one is email, the other is mobile phone communication. So the multi-degree one zero of node I is the number of friend with whom node I communicates via email, but not mobile phone. K01 is the number of friends via mobile phone, but not email. And KI11 is the number of friends communicating via both means of communication. And this notion of uh, multi-degree multi is actually uh, very important for modeling a network because we mentioned that many multi-layer network have overlap, but uh, a lot of uh, you know, most most naive methods to model these graphs do not display overlap because when most of the network have sparse number of links, so a number of links that scales only like linearly with the number of nodes, while the full possibility is kind of scaling like n square. So if you just draw one network in one layer and one network in the other layer independently, there is a negligible probability that the link uh, will overlap in both layers. So what you need to do is really to enforce the multi-degree. So you can put stub on the node in, um, in layer, in, in lay, stab, red stub are in layer one and two, uh, green stub are only in layer two, black stub are only in layer one, and then you randomly match the stub. Okay, and or you can have uh, another approach in which you assign a probability of having a given multi link between every two nodes, and with this probability, you assign uh, a multi link. So, really, this ensemble can be used to control and have reliable null model which control this uh, link overlap for for networks. And uh, there are interesting results. Let me just uh, cite the fact that, uh, you know, you can treat with information theory, this approach and with statistical mechanics, uh, the, the, this, this marginal are given by this kind of logistic function. Um, if the degree are not uh, too uh, large, this is uh, as expression which this marginal can be factorizing in this multi-degree, which is a kind of uh, simplification, which uh, is quite useful to model dynamics on this um, multi-layer network. And actually you can characterize also how many, what is the information content of this ensemble? So what is the logarithm of the number, the typical number of multiplex network that you have in this ensemble? And you have two different expression for this uh, exponential canonical uh, multiplex uh, uh, ensemble and from this micro canonical or configuration model in which we enforce the art constraint. And interesting, this is a little bit for uh, aficionado of information theory. I interesting this two entropy also if the constraint are similar conjugated these two ensembles are not equivalent. So you need to be very careful when you model dynamical process on these two models, they, they can uh, have different, uh, different uh, uh, outcome. So this is the same what happens in, a, in a, the, the difference between what is in a uh, in, in network, a regular network, a network in which each node has exactly 10 links and a soft network in which each node has in average 10 links. So, and this will be a Poisson network. So this is the difference between regular network and a Poisson network here is generalized to this multi-layer construction. So, but multi-links are really used also for inference. And this is a work, uh, uh, this cited work for, from the Cambridge U group that use this multilinks as motives. So they count how many multilinks you have respect to a null model. And from this zeta score, they, fi they find important uh, uh, result for their data set. So uh, another work in which they have applied these multilinks is this uh, work by Musumeci et al. 
in which they have looked at um, the multi-degree actually, and they found that the multi-degree revealed the different role of um, financial sector in financial crisis. And what we have done, this is our work, we studied this citation and collaboration network between scientists and find that the weight, the, the number of citation uh, an author received depends on the number of his collaborator. And actually that, you know, uh, the, and there, there is a trend that uh, we can assess uh, with the multi-layer structure is that the way Cite, uh, scientists cite their collaborators is different from the way they cite the other scientists. And this is a very intuitive uh, result, but is a result which would be very, very difficult to find out uh, just by looking at single layer in isolation, because you need in some sense to condition on the presence of, of the other interaction. And this is a a proof of concept of a general uh, result that actually uh, multiplex networks include, include more information than their single layer. And uh, so they, they open the, the way for, for a more, more, more detail and uh, modeling and understanding of the interplay between the structure and the function of, of these networks. So let me just uh, uh, touch on uh, a different topic, if I may. Can I, can I or should I, do I have time? Um, I you still have about five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I will try. Mm -hmm. So another a, a very important property is uh, multi-layer networks and, and robustness. So we mentioned these interlinks, these white dashed links connecting a replica node. And we mentioned that a cost can be a possible interpretation of those. Another interpretation of those is interdependence, meaning that it might be that, you know, if one is a power plant and the other is a, a communication network that is controlling the power plant, uh, a failure of one node implies the failure of the other node deterministically. So in order to study the robustness of how this network respond to perturbation, there has been a framework of mutually connected giant component, which extend the notion of giant component in a graph in which the mutually connected giant component is formed by a pair of, node, pair of nodes that are connected at least by one part in each layer. And these uh, can be seen to, uh, to be the connected component that result from an avalanche of failure propagating on the different layers. So what happens is that when you have, for instance, Poisson network and you look at the giant components, so you damage and you read this diagram from the right to the left, you see the blue line. So the giant component is reduced progressively until it vanish in the infinite network limit at a given threshold. But when you have interdependence, so the red and the orange line, you start to uh, damage. So you read this from the right to the left, but at a certain moment you find a tipping point at which the system collapses abruptly. And here there are big avalanches of failure indicating that the system is much more fragile. So a uh, question is that this framework is quite uh, interesting to uh, kind of capture the fragility of the possible fragility of, for instance, infrastructure that are more and more connected and has been interpreted in this uh, direction. But another question is how can we boost the, the robustness of this multi-layer network? And of course, if we look at the fact that biological networks are also multi-layer, and then we look at the infrastructure, well, infrastructure might be really more fragile, but what about biological networks? They must be in some sense uh, advantageous biologically. So if they are selected by evolution, they should not be so fragile uh, as, uh, as it is. So, so can we have 
a notion of uh, that you know in some sense explains the occurrence of this multi-layer network also in uh, in uh, in biology and it can can tell us uh, what happens um, what, what are the mechanisms to buffer this fragility because I, we have seen this picture you know the the red and the orange the transition was more and more tragic as the number of layer was was increasing so what we devise is these redundant interdependencies in which a replica node is active if at least one of its replica node is active not if all its replica nodes are active and with this model, uh, when we increase the number of layers, uh, the point at which we have the transition and the jump that we observe, so the cascading failure that we observe, instead of, uh, of uh, the, so the, the, the average uh, degree for, uh, at which we have the transition for the mutually connected giant component is the blue symbol will increase the jump would increase with the number of layers, but here in the redundant version, it decreases with the number of layers. And we have some equation in message passing approach, which have this diagrammatic expression. It's quite complex. And this message passing can be applied also to single network. So we apply to our American uh, Delta, American United, Delta United airline networks. And we find that you know the redundant model as is, is, is more robust. Can we can gain some robustness of, of the network as the number of layer increase? So with this, I reach my conclusion. So I wanted to 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 to, to describe to you multi-layer networks that are able to capture the complexity of system where links have different connotation. And they, this system uh, allow to encode more information than, than single layer taken in isolation. They are um, very, very useful structure to study dynamics also. And as an example, we have seen this uh, role of robustness and redundance of, uh, um, of, of uh, redundances of the interdependencies. So these are the links and you're free to look at uh, the, the GitHub page for, for some code. Thank you so much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Ginestra, for this uh, very interesting talk and uh, especially for the perfect timing. So it, it's open for question. You can simply put the, the questions in the question and, and the answers or in the chat. And there's one question by, by Jan Martin. Um, he asks how to reveal safety of functionality between layers, networks, aging aggressors. Okay, I, I, um, I don't know uh, exactly uh, this terminology that is used. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so the, um, the, these networks are also, uh, um, I, I should mention, are also used for temporal, temporal networks, so networks that change in time, so the different layers can characterize the network at different times, so you can study, you can use this approach to study, um, to study time changing uh, networks and this has been done for um, brain networks but also for social networks and there is a, a lot of interest in for instance in community detection so for instance in this um, multi-layer temporal networks you can have a community for instance a student in the kindergarten that they have community of friends depending on the time of the day, right? Because during lunch, they have uh, a inter-class kind of uh, groups that, that play together. And during the class, they, they of course, they partition into groups that uh, are related only to different, to different classes. And this can be done with Parafac kind of algorithm. So you have practically this tensor with three indices and you find 
the, the component there that are most important to describe the tensor, to decompose the tensor. Thanks. Um, maybe one question from my side. Um, so, so for me, the, the role of these multi-layer networks is uh, very apparent in in, uh, in the application to the public transport. So with the different means of transport, this is very clear to explain. So, so my question is uh, also in public transport, uh, optimization is very important. So does this uh, new concept of multi-layer networks also has an impact on the way of combinatorical optimization? That's a very interesting uh, point of view. There has been some work on transportation networks and for instance, in diffusion. So there are some property, for instance, quite, uh, quite um, how to say, uh, in, intuitive is that for instance, if you have multiple layer, the, you know, the, the diffusion time is, is decreasing because you, you reach more uh, faster the, the destination. But in terms of combinatorics, th this would be quite interesting for me to work on because I'm, I'm quite, uh, I like combinatorics, but I think uh, we not uh, been fully addressed in, in this context. So most of the combinatories has been focusing on this percolation model that have different uh, rule. But um, yes, yes. As far as I know, this has not been done yeah, for, for okay. transportation. I, I just know that some of our participants are working on this in this field of uh, 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 optimization. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I would be interested to, to interact with this topic. So. There's a last question. Uh, it's more philosophical um, from Mario Grassi. Why mathematics, a product of human mind, intrinsically far from reality, can very often describe reality in a very detailed manner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this uh, incredible power of mathematics is, uh, I think, uh, is quite debated, right? Uh, um, historically and also recently with, uh, I think, uh, the book of Tegmark and saying that actually the reality is maths. <laughs> 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 so yes, it's a quite interesting um, aspect. I, I, I think I, I look at this with marvel more than with hope to understand. <laughs> Okay, Tinesto, thanks a lot for your nice contribution. Thank you. Thank you. For and um, this is the end of our plenary morning session. So you can now move on to the virtual coffee break or take a real coffee as, as you like. And uh, we, we meet again at uh, 1020. Okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>